Chapter 8. Amelia. M, are you ready? Amber asked as she walked the stairs to where I was, I just nodded deciding not to say anything. Amber reached out and grabbed my hand, everything will be fine M, trust me. She said and I nodded letting out a deep breath that I wasn't even aware I was holding. That's my girl. She said pocking my cheeks playfully, I gave her a warm smile before we walked out of the house into the car. The ride to the clinic was silent, I hope we would be able to live with ourselves after this. After some few hours, we made to the clinic, ready? Amber asked with a smile, it amazes me how she could be happy at a moment like this, I cracked a weak one before getting down from the car and walked towards the clinic. We stepped inside and my eyes instantly shifted to the bunch of people in the room all their eyes were on me like they were judging me or something, ignoring them we approached the petite nurse at the front desk, Amber did most of the talking I just watched and listened, the nurse began asking necessary questions like do you have any allergies? Do you use contraception and so on? Then she asked the most terrifying of them all, are you 100% sure you want to go through with this? She asked and I froze. Of course she is. Amber butts in making the nurse threw her a glare, I am talking to Miss Clark. She said, I cleared my throat, yes. I said but it felt like a whispered it to myself. She placed my file away, take a seat the doctor will see you shortly. She said, we nodded and walked over to the waiting hall where a bunch of people were equally waiting. I pulled out my phone from my pocket and began through scrolling funny pictures trying to distract myself a little. A few minutes later, my name was called in, Amber helped me stand up as we began walking into the doctor's office, as usual, the doctor began explaining how the procedure would go, then she underwent an ultrasound to locate the position of the fetus, a little part of me wanted to see it. After paying for the procedure and the contraceptives we walked back to the hall to wait again, but it didn't take long before I was called into the anesthetics office, the doctor began asking the same question about my medical history and so on. We waited a little longer again before it was finally time, the nurses helped me change into a gown, that made me feel a little exposed and at the same time comfy. Miss, you can't come in. The nurses said to Amber before they rolled me into the surgical room, they began taking some blood from my elbow, as soon as they were done taking the blood they placed an oxygen mask on my nose administering the anesthetic, I suddenly began to feel my entire body go numb before I went into a deep sleep. A few hours later, I don't know how long I've been out but when I woke up and attempted to flutter my eyes open I was instantly greeted by a huge pang of a headache which felt a little bit like a migraine, I succeed in completely fluttering them open that's when I realized I was in a different room that was nothing like the clinic even my clothes were back on now. Where the hell am I? I jumped to my feet as I heard the sound of the key on the door, I stepped back in fear as I watched the door slowly swing open and a figure that was illuminated by the strong ray of the sunlight stepped in. No, my jaw almost fell to the ground as I realized who it was. Mrs. Gray. Chapter 9. Amelia. Mrs. Gray stood there with a black folder in her hand, she walked into the room silently closing the door behind her leaning her back against the wall without saying a word, her eyes wandered around me in deadly silence. The calm composure she maintained terrified me more, I had no idea what to expect next, you just attempted aborting her unborn grandchild a few hours ago you should be more than terrified Amelia, my inner voice reminded me. What was the plan Miss Clark? She spoke up, let me guess you thought you could get rid of my unborn grandchild and get away with it without me finding out. I looked down at my feet scared to look up because that was exactly the plan, how did you find me? I built up the courage to ask. I had 24 hour surveillance placed on you Miss Clark, did you think I would allow a desperate little girl possibly carrying my grandchild to be wandering around the city freely? She chuckled at me, how stupid do you think I am Miss Clark? She hurled. I gulped swallowing thickly, are you going to kill me? Not yet, but here's how things are going to go from now on. She said handing me the folder, I reached out and took the folder from her hand, open it. She growled with shaky hands I opened the folder and began reading through it. This is Star Enterprise, my mother's working place. I uttered not sure where she's heading with this. 
She moved towards me, Star Enterprise just recently became Gray Enterprise, she smirked, and according to the company's financial statements your mother owes the company over $800,000, she said and I covered my mouth in shock, what could mother possibly have done with such huge amount of money? I think there's a mistake somewhere. I uttered still in belief, there's no way my mother would borrow such amount of money and not inform us about it. I don't make mistakes Miss Clark. She said with alter confidence. She stepped further and sat at the edge of the bed, I am really not a bad person Miss Clark, but when it involves protecting my family. She paused her eyes turning pitch black, I can be the deadliest there can be. She said, you're smart girl Miss Clark so I am assuming you understand clearly where I am heading at. And if I don't comply with your demands? I found myself, changeling her, me Amelia Clark challenging a gray, who would have thought, let's just hope it keeps me alive for long. Then be ready to have your family packed up with a mount hill of lawsuits and your mother remarkable image and accomplishments over the years reduced down to a mere earth's crusts. Her mouth turned to a deadly smirk, and that's not even close to the things I am capable of, when I think, I am being crossed, she said in the coldest manner possible. How could anyone be this cruel and emotionless? So, the next time you try to pull a stunt like the one you just did, I promise you, you would have the pleasure to watch your entire family suffer for it. Have I made myself clear Miss Clark? I cold words sent shivers down my body. Please. I pleaded, I would do anything you want just don't involve my family. I saw myself pleading and giving in to her, I can't allow her to hurt my family, I am the reason they are involved in this mess in the first place. Are we clear Miss Clark? Her high-pitched voice echoed through the entire room and I nodded hysterically covering my mouth with my hand to prevent myself from bursting out into tears, but I seemed to be failing miserably. How the hell did you get here Amelia? I thought as more tears began to roll down from my eyes down to my neck. Good. She stood up dusting herself up, freshen up there are fresh clothes and towels in the drawer, I will ask the maid to prepare you something to eat. She and turned to leave, I want to go home. I uttered mistily before she could leave. This is your new home try and get comfortable. She said and slammed the door on her way out. As soon left she I sunk to the ground caving and allowing myself to cry. Chapter 10. Amelia. I was still frozen and clutched to the ground when the door suddenly pushed open, I looked up to see the nice lady I had met the last time I was here, she had a pity expression on her face as her eyes traveled down my weak form on the floor, oh? Child, you are not some prisoner. She trailed off reaching out to me, come on, get up. She held to me and pulling up off the floor, you must be starving? I shook my head, I am fine. I lied and at that exact moment, my stomach began to growl. You are a terrible liar child. She shot moving towards the door, come on, she said gesturing me to come along. I huffed and followed her behind down the stairs to what looked like the kitchen, take a seat. She said, I pulled out a chair and sat down, what would you like to eat? She asked with her back turned to the fridge. I don't care. I spat. She turned her face fully to me. Child if you don't care about yourself at least show some love to that child you're carrying cuz whether you want it or not you are stuck with it. She shot back. News travels around here fast, I sighed. Pie. I whispered. Hmm. She shook her head at me muttering something under her breath as she placed an empty plate in front of me. My eyes wandered around the kitchen, where's everyone? I found myself asking. Doing business. She said like I am supposed to know what that means, I just nodded pretending to understand. Thank you. I said as she placed a delicious looking apple pie on my plate which is what I have been craving the whole day. She pulled out a chair and sat beside me, her eyes hovering around me in silence as I tried to eat. What's your name? She asked after a while. Amelia. I whispered. Amelia crying ain't gonna solve anything you've got to buckle up and be strong because it ain't all about you anymore. She said in a motherly tone. I nodded, I will. She smiled, for someone who's involved with the greys she seems really nice, you work here? I asked, starting a conversation. She nodded her head, smiling at the memory, I have been working for the greys even before Damien was born and now he's all grown up. 
She must have been really disappointed to see how rude and arrogant he turned out to be, where's he? I asked out the blue. Who? Damien. Up in his room. She said in a sad tone. What happened to him? I mean the last time I was here you mentioned something about pain. I asked at this point my mind was rambling with a lot of questions, if I had to be stuck here for nine months I should at least get to know a little bit about the people I am getting involved with. She leaned back against the chair with a slightly shocked expression on her face, she didn't tell you, she trailed off. Tell me what? I asked shoving a spoon full of apple pie in my mouth. That Damien is blind? My heart stopped.